welcome to the Authors Lighthouse podcast, helping writers and emerging authors navigate the choppy waters of publishing. I'm your host, Karen Schober, indie author and author consultant. Hello, and welcome back to the Authors Lighthouse. <clears throat> Today's episode is uh, one that is very familiar, very common, and we're going to discuss the topic of imposter syndrome. For those of you who are not familiar with the term, imposter syndrome is a feeling of self-doubt, inadequacy, and fraudulence, despite one's accomplishments and successes. It is a phenomenon that affects a lot of people, including writers, and can have a significant impact on their confidence and productivity. In this episode, we'll explore what imposter syndrome is, how it affects writers, and how we can try to overcome it. Imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern in which a person doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. In the context of writing, imposter syndrome can cause writers to doubt their ability to write well or be successful, even if they have a track record of published works or positive feedback. It can lead to procrastination, my favorite, self-sabotage, and a lack of confidence, all of which can be detrimental to a writer's career and mental health. However, it is important to note that imposter syndrome is a common experience among writers and can be managed with the right mindset and strategies, which we'll explore some today. Some common signs and symptoms of imposter syndrome, especially for writers, can include feeling like a fraud, even if you've had success as a writer. You could be a best a bestseller and still uh, suffer from imposter syndrome. Believing that any success that you had was due to luck or other external factors rather than your own skills and abilities. You can be hypercritical of your own work and believe that it's never good enough. Extreme perfectionism. Feeling like you don't deserve the success or recognition for your writing. Comparing yourself to other writers and feeling like you don't measure up. Struggling with procrastination, my personal uh, issue there, and self or self-sabotage, such as avoiding writing or missing deadlines. And these are just a few of the examples of signs and symptoms of imposter syndrome that writers experience. If you recognize any of these patterns in yourself, know, first of all, you are not alone. And there are strategies that you can use to overcome them. Humor is a great way to put things into perspective and help us see how irrational our imposter syndrome can be. Like, I won an award for my writing, but I'm pretty sure it was a mistake and they meant to give it to the other guy with my same name. Like, you know, that's kind of silly. Or I've published a book, but sometimes I still feel like I'm just playing dress up as a writer. Or I got a positive review, but they probably just felt sorry for me. So it's a positive thing, but you're downplaying it. You're, you're saying that you're not worthy of that accolade. Humor can help us acknowledge the ridiculousness of our imposter syndrome or our imposter syndrome thoughts and bring some levity to the situation. It is important to remember that everyone experiences imposter syndrome at some point and using humor can be a very helpful way to cope with it. There are many triggers that can contribute or make imposter syndrome worse in writers. And some of these are negative feedback or rejection letters. And being a writer, when you put your work out there, you're opening yourself up for negative feedback or if you're uh, pursuing uh, an agent or a publishing contract, you're gonna get rejection letters. Uh, yes, our skin gets thick, but not always. And sometimes those negative uh, uh, things come and start seeping in and taking hold. Uh, 
comparing yourself to other writers, especially those who may seem more successful or accomplished. And I have to say, being in writers groups on Facebook, that's really hard, especially the marketing author pages, because you see all this success. It's like, well, why can't I do that? Uh, high stakes situations, such as pitching to an agent or editor or releasing a new book can trigger all this. Like I said before, perfectionism or the belief that one's writings need to be flawless to be considered good enough. And feeling like an outsider or not belonging to the writing community. These triggers can create a cycle of self-doubt and negative thinking, which can further contribute to imposter syndrome. However, it is important that these triggers and, de and develop strategies to cope with them, such as reframing a negative feedback as a learning opportunity, focusing on one's own unique strengths and writing voice, and seeking support from other fellow writers or even a therapist or mental health professional. There are many strategies that writers can use to handle the triggers of imposter syndrome. And here's just a few. Reframing negative feedback as constructive criticism. Instead of seeing the negative feedback as a personal attack or sign of failure, try to view it as an opportunity for growth and improvement. Use the feedback to identify the areas where you can strengthen your writing or story. And remember that even the most successful writers will receive negative feedback at many times. You're not going to find, a, you're not going to write a book that's going to make everybody happy. You want to focus on your own progress instead of comparing yourself to others. Instead of constantly measuring yourself against other writers. Focus on your own writing journey and the progress you've made. Celebrate your accomplishments no matter how small. And remember that everyone's writing journey is unique. Practice self-comparison. Instead of being hard on yourself for mistakes or setbacks, practice self-compassion, rather, and treat yourself with kindness and understanding. Remember that everyone makes mistakes and that setbacks are a natural part of the writing process. And seek support from fellow writers or therapists. I am in a writer's group, which has been fantastic. Uh, but talking to other writers who have experienced imposter syndrome can be really helpful because this is not something that is unique. It, it happens to almost every single writer out there. And they can offer both empathy and support. Seeking help of a therapist or mental health professional can also provide a safe space for you to explore your feelings and develop coping strategies. And remember that imposter syndrome is a common experience for many writers, but it doesn't have to hold you back from achieving your goals. With the right mindset and strategies, you can learn to overcome imposter syndrome and thrive as a writer. And humor, it, it makes you laugh and it can be a great way to put things into perspective and help us see some of our triggers may not be as significant as we initially thought. So here's a few examples. I got a one star review on Goodreads. Well, now I have something to commiserate with, with all the other great writers who have received one star reviews. Welcome to the club. Some people say you're not a true author until you get one star review. So it's very common. And remember, people are either just mean or it wasn't their cup of tea. And that's okay. Take what you can learn from those negative reviews and use it to strengthen yourself. Here's another one. Feeling like an imposter because you haven't gotten a book deal yet. Don't worry. J.K. Rowling was rejected by 12 different publishers before Harry Potter was accepted. So you're in pretty good company. Comparing yourself to writers who seem to effortlessly churn out bestsellers. Maybe they're secretly a robot, or maybe they just have a really good editor. You never know. My theory, they're probably an alien <laughs> or a mole person. Using humor to make light of these triggers, we can take some of the power away from our imposter syndrome thoughts 
and remind ourselves that we are all in this together as writers. Overcoming imposter syndrome can be a challenge, but there are many practical strategies that writers can use to help manage these feelings. You can practice positive self-talk, and that's something that we should all do every day in our life. If we talk negatively about ourselves, it's just going to lead down a slippery slope. I try, personally, I try never to talk negatively about myself, and I usually end up catching myself when I do. Instead of allowing negative self-talk to take over, intentionally choose positive and affirming statements to say to yourself, like, I am a talented writer, my work has value, and I deserve success. Don't say things like, I'm stupid, I'm lazy. What is that accomplishing? Nothing. Seek support from other writers. Connecting with other writers who have experienced imposter syndrome can be extremely helpful. Share experiences with fellow writers and offer support and encouragement in return. I actually have a writer friend that I have known since I think 1999, maybe even before that. And she's fabulous and I love hearing her about her triumphs and her failures. And she's always there when I need a shoulder to lean on in my own writing processes. Always celebrate your small victories. Recognize and celebrate your accomplishments, no matter how small they may seem. This can be including things like finishing a draft, receiving positive feedback, or meeting a writing goal, even if it's your daily writing goal of hitting so many words or so much time. Celebrate it. It feels good. Of course, you want to practice self-care. Taking care of yourself can help you feel more confident and resilient in the face of imposter syndrome. This can include things like getting enough sleep, eating well, exercising, and taking breaks when you need them. Also, just taking some time out for yourself. A little me time goes a long way. And of course, you can get help from a therapist or mental health professional. If imposter syndrome is interfering with your ability to write or causing significant distress, consider seeking help from a therapist. A therapist can offer support, guidance, and practical strategies for managing imposter syndrome. It doesn't have to be an illness. It can be just some help, and that's great. And remember that everyone experiences imposter syndrome at some point and it doesn't have to hold you back from achieving your writing goal. With the right strategies and support, you can learn to overcome imposter syndrome and thrive as a writer. So today we discussed imposter syndrome for writers. And remember, this is a common issue that affects many, many writers, probably everyone at one point in time. We know now what imposter syndrome is and the signs and symptoms plus the common triggers that can exasperate these feelings. We also talked about some practical strategies for overcoming imposter syndrome, and there are countless more that we did not discuss. But remember to practice positive self-talk, seek support from other writers, celebrate those small victories, and practice self-care. Remember to use humor to illustrate how irrational these feelings can be, and emphasize that with the right strategies and support, imposter syndrome can be managed and overcome. Remember, if you're struggling with imposter syndrome, you are not alone. Keep a light heart, implement practical strategies, and stay true to the love of writing. Of course, if I have stories of my battle with imposter syndrome, and I would love to tell you more about them. But in the comments section, tell me what your battles with imposter syndrome are. It could be something small, something big, and how you have overcome that. Uh, it could be something new, something old. Please share in the comments section. I really would like to hear because I know we are not alone. show is brought to you by my book, Hollywood Hearts, The Second Act, now up on Amazon and in Kindle Unlimited. Beth Edwards didn't think her book 
would be anything more than her scribblings in a notebook. Never in her wildest dreams would she have thought that her book would become a blockbuster success and a Hollywood came calling. Life would never be the same for Beth and her young family as they headed to Hollywood to oversee production. Robert Cobb, the seasoned actor, had wanted to be involved in the project since he had seen Beth on TV promoting her book. He was amazed at who Beth was. As their characters fall for each other on the screen, they are both confused with what they are feeling off screen. Will true love happen when the director calls out cut, that's a wrap? You like behind the scenes of Hollywood and the romance of meeting and falling for one of your TV crushes, Hollywood Hearts, the second act, a contemporary feel-good romance, will capture your heart. Find it on Amazon, a Kindle Unlimited exclusive. So in news this week, when taking a walk through your neighborhood, you may have seen these cute little boxes like overgrown birdhouses with books in them for anyone to take or leave a book. These little free libraries are created to share books for anyone who wants one. I've looked at many of them and you never know what little gems you'll find in there. It could be from someone cleaning out their house of books that they don't need anymore or just books that people want to share with the community. The organization, The Little Free Library, started by Todd Ball in 2008 and based in St. Paul, Minnesota, announced that they have plans to work with local groups and organizations to end book deserts in the U.S. A book desert is an area that does not have access to books in the U.S. And, or anywhere, really. And this nonprofit estimates that they need about 2,500 more little free libraries created and maintained, keyword maintained, to reach this goal. And this would be adding to the 150,000 little free libraries that are registered around the world. The executive director of Little Free Libraries, Greg Metzler, stated the Little Free Library Network has grown significantly as of late, and we want to leverage that growth to support communities that have limited book resources. Our strategic plan is to place and sustain a Little Free Library book exchange in 2,500 identified census tracts across the U.S. where book access is limited. They're also seeking funding and partners to help them reach their goal of the initiative. Besides the additional 2,500 Little Free Libraries, they also started the Indigenous Library Program to install and maintain Little Free Libraries on reservations and other communities in the U.S. and Canada where there are large populations of Indigenous people that are often underserved and would benefit from a Little Free Library in their community. If anyone is looking for more information or to make a donation to the Little free library organization, I provided a link in the show notes. The word of the week, the advance. An advance sounds like what it is. It is money that a publisher pays the writer before the book is published. It could be paid in installments as the author submits pages or in one lump sum. And if you have an agent, they also get a percentage of the advance. It is common to get half the advance upon signing and the other half on final delivery of the manuscript. The one thing about advances, while it sounds good, authors should know that this is an advance on future royalties of the book. Normally, an author will not see any future royalties payments until they have earned their advance back in book sales. While this is great for established mega authors, for newer authors, it is a gamble. And remember, book sales are never, ever guaranteed. Make sure to read over your contract and have an attorney review it as well before signing anything. But that is an advance. All right, time for my personal update. 
Uh, this week was pretty quiet. I did need to take a few days off to tend to some personal matters, but don't worry, all is well. Uh, I've been dealing with writer's block, as you may remember, but I chose to do something different to get the juices flowing again. I've had a plot bunny running around in my head for a long while. We're talking years. The only problem is that it's a cozy, cozy murder mystery and not a romance. Yep, I'm genre hopping. Well, I wasn't getting any work done on my current project, so I've decided to take a break from that one and jump into the cozy murder mystery. Uh, I'm going to add on that in my writer's group, someone actually mentioned that it is almost time, actually it is time, for Camp NaNoWriMo. And I figured, why the heck not? For those that don't know, NaNoWriMo, or the National Novel Writing Month, is a nonprofit organization that hosts online challenges for writing. Originally, it was just writing a novel in November, 50,000 words or more. But they've expanded to Camp NaNo in April and July, plus they have a Now What in January and February to turn what you've written into something that can be published. So it's editing and formatting. These are all free, but of course they do accept donations and sell some pretty nice merch. They are a 503c organization, so they are a legit nonprofit, uh, but that's to support the site and their Young Writers Program. A pretty cool program if you look into it. Their website's really nice and there's a lot of bells and whistles that you'll find there. So the fun part is as I talk out the points of the book, my husband is shocked with the questions I'm pondering about murdering someone. He's never seen me plot out a book before and this being my first mystery, I've been pondering out a lot. I, I warned him that it's all for a book, but I still get odd looks from him as I discuss things like what poison I should use. <laughs> so uh, that's that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to come and take part of Camp Nano, it's not too late. It's free to sign up for. And the link to the site is in the show notes. And if anyone wants to become one of my writing buddies, my username is Sarchix, S-A-R-C-H-I-X. Look me up. I'll be happy to be your writing buddy. So the concept is that I'm going to be writing 1,667 words a day. So if you take 50,000 words, divide it by 30 days, it means you're doing 1,666.6 6 repeated. We're going to round that up. Uh, words to be written in a day. I have still a ton of pre-writing to do but I do have enough to get started. I only decided to do camp last Thursday and camp started Saturday, yesterday. I'm happy to say that I'm on goal so far and I look forward to this challenge to get me out of the slump I've been in. It's It's been a challenge and uh, sitting there writing new content in a new universe, in a new world has been really new because I've been living with my old stories for so long. Uh, I hope I get this finished and I will keep you updated. Uh, if anything, you guys are my accountability partners. So that's all for me this week. Please check out the links in the show notes. Tell me about your challenges with imposter syndrome. And if you decide to jump in on Camp Nano, look me up. I'm Sartrix. I'd love to be your buddy. Have a great week. And we'll talk soon. This was the Author's Lighthouse, a Fireball Studio production. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Author's Lighthouse. And if you like the show, leave us, leave us a five-star review on your podcast platform. It really helps get the show discovered. And also don't forget to subscribe. If you have a topic you would like to suggest for a future episode, email it to Karen at theauthorslighthouse.com. If you liked this episode and want to hear more, please support the show at patreon.com slash authors lighthouse. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash authors lighthouse. Every bit helps support the show. This was the Authors Lighthouse, a Fireball Studio production. 
Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Authors Lighthouse and on Twitter at Authors LH. And if you like the show, subscribe and leave us five star review on your favorite podcast platform. It really helps get the show discovered. If you have a topic you would like to suggest for a future episode, email it to Karen at the authors lighthouse.com. That's K A R E N at the authors lighthouse.com. And if you really like this story and want to help more, please support the show at patreon.com slash authors lighthouse. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash authors lighthouse. Every little bit helps support the show. And thank you.